<laughs> Wes Watson. Wes Watson. Wes, Wes, Wes. All right. I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a while now. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, Wes Watson went viral. He was on stage. He was at a Fresh and Fit gathering, some sort of you know event that they were having. And he was featured in a lineup of douchebags, you know, some sort of douchebag convention. I guess these guys got together to show their many, many fans, you know, their legions of dweeb followers, you know, what it means to be successful and how to be successful and what it means to be a man and all of this dumb shit, right? You know, so Wes was featured in, in this event, right? So, and like, I don't even know where to begin, you know, but a particular moment in that, um, in that whole special event, whatever the hell you want to call it, Wes spazzes out. <laughs> and I guess I'll start by saying this. Fresh started with a question. He goes, okay, guys, how do you define success? And then, you know, he starts with Bandman Kevil. Bandman Kevil was up there, you know, and Bandman Kevil talks about, you know, what does it mean to be successful? He defines it. It's simple. He says, success means, hey, you're free, free to do whatever you want, you know, so... Okay, fair enough. You know, it's a good way to define, find a success or whatever. So it goes to the next guy. And the next guy defines what it means to be successful in his eyes. Then the question gets to Wes Watson. <laughs> and that's when it all went down. And that's when the train wreck began. And as soon as Wes opened his mouth, you can already see he gives off a big sigh. He's like, <sighs> You know, basically like, fuck these niggas. <laughs> fuck what these dudes talking about. And then he goes on this huge diatribe, you know, talking about how, you know, he's larger than life. And, you know, you got to look in the mirror and be that, you know, he every time he looks in the mirror, he sees the man he wants to see. You got to have huge muscles. You got to be rich to the gill. You got to be rare. You know, you got to have tattoos. You got to have gone to prison. And he goes on a roll and just goes on a roll and roll and roll and boom, boom. And it was crazy because throughout the whole event, Wes kept cutting everybody off, even when nobody even asked him a question. Like a, a dude in the crowd will specifically ask one of the other guys, like, for example, he asked Myron and Wes would jump in like, motherfucker, nobody's even talking to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like he went on a roll and roll. So back to the whole, well, you know, how do you find success? What does it mean to be successful? Finally, he shut the fuck up, right? And, you know, it gets to another guy on stage, on the panel, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It gets to a guy by the name of Andrew Wilson. And Andrew Wilson defines what it means to be successful in his eyes, you know? And he took more of a, a spiritual approach. He says, you know, while materialism isn't fundamentally against Christian ethics or whatnot, you know, you got to put things in priority. The main priority should be family and God. And oh man, Wes took it personal, dude. Wes took it personal. He spazzed. He lost his shit. He didn't even let Andrew finish. He just, you know, Wes kind of reminds me of like, he make a hell of a pro wrestler. It's like, he, he every time he talks, it's like watching a rip off, a knockoff Scott Steiner promo. It's hilarious, man. I can't, oh my God. It's like, you know, he cuts off and said, fuck that guy. You know, listen, you got to be rich. You got to be rare. You got to be whatever the fuck he said. Rich, rip, and rare. Got to be rich. You got to be rip. You got to be rare, brother. Oh, yeah. Holler if you hear me. Big bad booty daddy. <laughs> What's me? He just went. I mean, just the steroids just imploded inside. I don't know what the hell happened to this dude. You know, he goes on. He's like, hey, fat boy. He just would not let Andrew finish. And you know, the crazy thing about it is. Wes took it very personal that Andrew was like, hey, you know, you know, you got to believe in God. We're, we're, you know, this is too much of a spiritual, not spiritual, not spiritual. It's too much of a materialistic society that we're living in. And Wes was not having it. He's like, fat boy, titty boy, because he kept I mean, Wes kept talking about the other guy's physical appearance. Like over and over, he's real infatuated with dude's physical appearance. It was looking weird. And it's crazy because a lot of those alpha males, ironically enough, they always talking about, oh, women do this, women do that, man. Talking about big people's physical appearance. I mean, couldn't you say that's like feminine-like behavior, bro? 
I mean, since we're like perpetuating stereotypes and stuff, who ain't that what women do? Like when women are losing an argument, what's the first thing they do? A tiny dick. Oh, he sucks and you know, you, know, you, you got you. They talk about your clothes, you know, your shoes and your hats and shit. That's feminine shit. The dude couldn't even stay on topic. You gotta be rich, brother. You gotta be rare, brother. You gotta be a uh, brother. You gotta be roided. You gotta be ridiculous. You gotta be retarded. As long as you got those three, brother, you can't tell me shit, brother. <laughs> Attacking appearance and shit. I didn't know that was alpha male behavior. I thought alpha males were so logical. Attacking appearance. He even told one man on that stage to shave his arms. Shave his arms. He was up there telling dudes to shave their arms. She lift up their short shirts and say, lift up your shirt. Show me how proud of Telling dudes to lift up their shirt. Lift up their shirt. Show, lift up your shirt. Show me your dick. Where's your dick? Show me your dick. You don't know her, that's right, you can't show me because you don't even know where it's at. Like, bro, this dude was like, he's doing getting a little creepy up here, dude. You know what I mean? Are you a little too too infatuated with other men's bodies? On a serious note, I don't like Andrew Wilson. I think he just uses Christianity to um, antagonize people and berate people. It's just something funny about him. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure eventually it'll reveal itself. Or maybe it won't, but it's just something about him I don't like. Nonetheless... I agree with his main point. I agree that there is definitely a lack of spiritual value in society and there is a rampant obsession with materialism. And Wes Watson, Wesley, Wesley Watson missed the whole point. You understand, Wesley? You missed the whole point. Liking material things isn't bad. I'm, I like a nice looking motorcycle. You know, I'm, I like a nice looking house. I like jewelry. But I don't prioritize these things. None of these things come before a higher power. God. Because at the end of the day, God doesn't give a fuck how many muscles you got. He doesn't give a fuck how much money you got. Some of the greatest people to walk this earth did not have muscles. They were not ripped, rich, and rare. Brother. Some of the greatest inventors, so many great people, the people that I've learned the most from in life, in terms of life lessons, and maybe not just even life lessons, but just tangible skills, whether it be using my hands, um, music, anything like that. I learned these things from people who were not buff. They didn't have lots of money. They weren't rich and rare and whatever the fuck else you're talking about. They were none of these things. So to sit here and say you don't have to listen to anyone because they don't have muscles is retarded. That should be a part of your little slogan. Rich, rare, and retarded. Now to an extent, I actually agree with Wes to an extent when he says he doesn't have to listen to anyone he doesn't want to be like he said that if you don't have something he he wants why should he listen to you and to an extent I agree for example if you want to be a carpenter you're not going to go around asking people who ain't built shit how to build a house you're going to ask experienced carpenters you know experienced tradesmen right so when it comes to like tangible things, worldly things, secular things, yeah, you, you might want to ask people or take advice from people who have experience in those particular areas. But when it comes to spirituality, spirituality is above the physical. Nobody is above spiritual guidance or being told that they're probably not living a, a, a very um, moral lifestyle. You know what I mean? For example... If I randomly snatch a, a baby from a, a mother's hands, right? She's holding hands with me and I just throw it over a bridge and laugh and watch it die, right? Or maybe it wasn't even the mother. Maybe, let's just say the baby was with the father and the father's fat, right? You like to go in on fat people. And I do this to this father. Just take his kid, just throw him. And the guy says, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? And I laugh and say, shut up, fat boy. Shut up, titty boy. You can't tell me shit. You see where I'm going here, Wes? 
Yes, you may have the muscles, but you just did something fucked up. You did something immoral. It's, it's It goes against God. If you're doing immoral things, no matter how many muscles, no matter how much money you have, you're not above spiritual, um, I don't know, man. You're, you're not, no one's above being told that they're a shit human being or they're doing shitty things. And that's the point. You know, it's interesting because Wes actually mentioned God at that live event. And he said, God is basically your inner conscious telling you to do something. Whatever your inner conscious is telling you, that's who God is. That's what God is, whatever you want to call it. And that's a deflection. That's pretty much distorting what uh, the concept of God or what people mean by God. To basically say God is your inner conscious, what does that either mean? He's basically saying, follow your inner conscious. That's what you want to do. Because towards like the end of that whole show, Wes tried to redeem himself by giving some little spiel about, you know, just follow your heart and, you know, whatever your inner conscious is, you know, become the best version of yourself. And as long as you can look in the mirror and say, that's who I want to be, build the man you want to be and all this stuff. And on the surface, it sounded good, but he still threw in little dirty pot shots to what he called, who he called the fat boy and things like that. He was still, still throwing in dirty pot shots, you know, but he was making an attempt to win the crowd over. But nonetheless, it was ridiculous because to basically say God is your inner conscious dude and to basically tell people to follow your inner conscious. Hey, Wes, a lot of times, what if your inner conscious is telling you to do some fucked up? To just tell people to go around and follow their, you know, their conscious or what their inner thoughts or the voices in their head. Dude, the voices in our head are always telling us the right thing. You know, what if the voices in your head are telling you to do something like fucked up that can, you know, you get where I'm going here, man. The voices in your head, you know, our inner conscious are not always telling us the right thing. And I'm, you know, sometimes we can go with the voices in our head, but you still have to go through that process of anal analyzing if the voices in our head are leading us down a moral path. But again, it's obvious a guy like Wes don't give two shits about morality or right and wrong. You know, he's the type that'll say, oh, morality is just subjective. It's all subjective. Wrong. Morality is not subjective. It's simple. Would you want someone doing to you what you are doing to them or something along those lines, right? You know, basically don't do things to other people if you don't want those same things done to you. If you can honestly say, yeah, I want to, I do that, but no, I wouldn't want it done to me. Then, hey, what you think and how you, you know, what you believe is immoral. If you don't want certain things done to you, but you want to do them to other people and you, that's right there. Objectively, you have a fucked up outlook on right and wrong. So it's not subjective. You just don't care. Morality is not subjective. It just turns down to people just don't care. And, you know, Andrew Wilson actually made a good point. At that event, he said, you got you to gotta ask yourself, what led this guy in prison to begin with? Wes, that very logic that you have, you know, it'll just do what your inner conscience is telling, you know, whatever. That's what landed you in prison to begin with, my guy. Because your inner conscience ain't the type of inner conscience that a person who really values, you know, God and, and tries to live, a, you know, walk down a path of, of right. And not wrong. This you don't you you don't care. A guy like you, your inner thoughts, you don't give a shit. It's clear you don't believe in God. So even right now, the things that I'm saying is probably oh fuck this guy, fuck this guy right and that bullshit, that God shit, that right and wrong shit. No, whatever might equals right. You one of those barbarian types, right? Might equals right, right? There's only one way to handle barbarians like you. Oh, just follow your inner voices. But what if your inner voices are telling you to grab some random girl's ass on the streets? You're just going to do that? You're going to follow that? Just follow your inner conscious. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, follow, follow. But what if the yellow brick road is telling you to walk down a path to very bad things? You know, Mother's Day was a few days ago, so I want to take the time to say happy belated Mother's Day to all of the wonderful mothers in this world, including you, Wesley Watson. But dude, what are you talking about? I mean, Wesley's a man. 
You know, he's the most alpha man that there is. You know, he's got muscles. He's got fast cars. He's got lots of money. Ripped, roided, rare. He's been to prison. Dude, I, what are you talking about? And, yeah, maybe, man, I don't know. Maybe in Wesley's delusional little world, that that's what it means to be a man. But yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. You see, I see a very insecure boy. An insecure woman, really. You, know, you got to constantly flaunt and talk and prove to the world, oh, I got this, I got that. Uh, I got big muscles. Uh, I got a fast car. I I'm rich. I I'm rare. I ran the yard. I was in prison. Everybody look at me. See? I'm alpha. I'm a lion. Nah. Not, not very masculine energy, if you ask me. Not very manly energy, I should say, if you ask me. Yeah, that's 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 like estrogen-like energy. <laughs> estrogen-like energy. That's why I call him Westrogen Watson. I think that's a very befitting name. Yeah, very, very feminine-like energy. Nothing manly about it. So once again, I gotta say, happy belated Mother's Day to Wes Watson.